Hello everyone and welcome back to another a massive chess game by Jose Rol Capablanca and in the chess game his opponent is Benito Villegas who was the chess champion of whole Argentina. A pretty good chess player and this chess game is from 1914. And let's see what happened in this chess game. So the legend Jose Rol Capablanca who has the white pieces starts the game with pushing the d-pawn d5, knight to f3, knight to f6, e3, c6, and then bishop to d3. What is this move? Well, this opening is actually known as the call system, for the records. Usually, white also sometimes plays c3, and you will see this premit, and you will see the king's bishop and king's knight developed, king's knight on f3, King's bishop on d3, and this is known as the call system. And an interesting note, even today, call system is actually sometimes popular at grandmaster level chess. And Magnus Carlsen actually used the call system against Sergei Karyakin in the World Chess Championship match in 2016 in game 8. But he lost that game, and he lost his only game against Karyakin with playing the call system. Interesting note. So call system was usually very popular in 1920s. So only for the records. After bishop to d3, we have bishop to g4, c4 by Capablanca. e6, developing the knight. Knight out, castling, bishop out, queen out, bishop back, pawn up. Bishop back and also developing the bishop and finishing the development. Exchanging the bishops. And black castled, centralizing the rook, and in the call system at the correct time, white is aiming to white is aiming to push to e pawn. So that is the purpose of white, queen to c7 and e4 by Capablanca. At the perfect time, d takes on e4, knight takes on e4, knight takes, and lifting the rook and bringing the big gun out. Rook takes on e4, bishop out. Queen over c5. Knight in. Well, in this position, Villegas captured the pawn. What would you do in this position? Maybe bishop takes pawn comes to mind. But Capablanca didn't do that. Jose Raul Capablanca. Captured the knight. Knight takes on d7. Sacrificing the queen. But we have queen takes on d7. Interestingly, not capturing the queen after thinking hard. And that was actually a wise de decision. It was a wise decision. So let's take it back. What happens if capturing the queen, which is obviously a tempting move. But then knight takes on f6. And if capturing the knight... Then black is getting checkmated by force. Bishop takes on f6, checkmate. There is no defense. But of course black doesn't have to capture the knight, isn't it? So if moving the king, what happens then? Can you guess the next move of white? White plays a move and black is in big trouble. Then here comes rook to h4, of course. Threatening checkmate. Rook takes on h7. So if capturing the knight, bishop takes, check, only move, checkmate. There is no defense. This was the beautiful calculation of Jose Rol Capablanca. And after rook to h4, what happens if pushing the pawn? What would you do again? Then of course rook takes on h6. This is check, only move. But then check, checking the king with the bishop after moving the king, capturing the queen. And white is much better. This is beautiful, isn't it? And this is also attacking the rook, so black can't trap the knight after defending the rook, knight to b5. And white has two pieces for the exchange, and this is actually much better for white. Okay, let's take it back. So Capablanca's calculation was pretty deep, fairly deep. 
After knight takes on d7, well, in this position, once again, Capablanca is not defending the queen, and he captured the knight. But Villegas, of course, he captured the knight. Obviously, he was not a chess petser, he was the chess champion of Argentina. Bishop takes on d4, bishop takes, rook takes on d4, defending the queen, and doubling the rooks on the d-file, and Capablanca has the control of the important open d-file. Fighting for it, b4 by Capablanca, advancing from the queen side. Exchanging the rooks, b6 not allowing c5, g3, a very patient move by Capablanca, giving the flight square to the king so there is no back rank problems, targeting the c-pawn, defending, attacking the queen, queen back, king to f8, and finally pushing the c-pawn at the correct time. So Capablanca simply wants to create a pass pawn, and this is going to be losing for black, and he is threatening to take the pawn maybe. Or maybe push the pawn, so this is not looking good for black. B takes on c5, but Capablanca played another beautiful move. And now he has double threat, attacking the h-pawn, and of course black can't take the pawn because the pawn is pinned, also threatening to take the pawn with the rook, or maybe capturing the pawn with the pawn. So rook down, at least defending, but Capablanca simply captured the pawn. B takes on c5. But we have g6. Well, defending the h-pawn, but let's take it back. Well, in this position, if capturing the pawn with the rook, then it is very simple, actually. If capturing the pawn with the rook, then here comes queen to b4, and the rook is pinned, and you're going to win the rook. So, okay. I think you get the picture. So, capturing the pawn with the rook is impossible. So, in the real chess game, after g6, Capablanca is marching. c6, king to g7, a4 by Capablanca. Well, in this position, actually, Capablanca played a weak move. Queen to b4 was the much better move. And actually black can't stop queen to b7. There is no sensible defense against queen to b7 and black is losing. So interesting, an interesting moment of this chess game. Again, in this position capturing the pawn, capturing the pawn with the rook is impossible because of queen to b4. So we have g6 and Capablanca is advancing but then he played a weak move an interesting moment of this chess game you won't expect a move like this from the great Hozerol Capablanca but it happens to everyone once again something like queen to b1 or queen to b4 was easily winning for white and then here comes queen to b7 and there is no sensible defense once again but with this move, Capablanca is giving a valuable tempo for his opponent. But Capablanca has a famous quote. He said, a good chess player is always lucky. <laughs> In this position, Black also played a weak move. A very bad move, actually, after Capablanca's bad move. This is what Black did, and this is losing on the spot. What would you do in this position if you had the white pieces? If I give you 3 seconds, guess the next move of Hozerol Capablanca. Your time is starting from now. Okay, so Capablanca played this very simple move. Queen to e5, this is check. And after pushing the pawn, the idea of check was capturing the rook. Sacrificing the queen. And this is all over for black. Black captured the queen and Capablanca pushed the pawn. And black resigned. What a game by Hozerol Capablanca. The possible continuation is very obvious. A move and then pushing the pawn. Queen and black can't stop promoting the queen. 
There is no defense. What a game. By Jose Rol Capablanca. A game with ups and downs. A dramatic and a beautiful chess game. But Capablanca's opponent was not a joke. He was a pretty strong chess player, but still Capablanca defeated his opponent and they also played another very beautiful chess game from 1911. And I hope I'm going to show you that chess game as well if I get the chance. So Capablanca once again in 1914 defeated his opponent and in this position once again please note that capturing the pawn with the rook would be a blunder because of queen to b4 the rook is pinned pinning the rook to the, to the king and that's winning the piece. That would be a horrible blunder so g6 of course not capturing the pawn advancing and Capablanca played a weak move once again but now this move <laughs> After a weak move, we see another even weaker move by black because Capablanca checked the king and capturing the rook and created the pass pawn and it is impossible to stop this pawn. Okay, so white is promoting the queen and black resigned. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.